I was looking at today's devotional, and uh, it was interesting. Because it makes a point I think sometimes people forget. While we have a wonderful way of presenting the gospel, whether it be <laughs> four spiritual laws, although you can't find those in the Bible. <laughs> oh, you can find the scriptures, but you can't find any place where it says there are four spiritual laws, but that's okay. Or the Roman road, which you can't find the Roman road in the Bible, but there's scriptures that they use for the Roman road, but that's okay too, because that's one way of sharing the gospel. And matter of fact, you can't really find the gospel because it's really not called the gospel, but <laughs> kind of sharing what Jesus said to do. <laughs> but anyways, the message, <laughs> I think the message really was, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people that behold in the city of David, born this day is the child of Jesus, and he shall be called wonderful counselor, savior, you know, prince of peace, you know, shall save his people from their sins. I think that was the good news, you know, but we won't go there either because we wouldn't want to confuse anyone about what the gospel is <laughs> or when. But anyways, today's devotion, as opposed to my theological discussion, is talking about something very interesting. It's discussing what Jesus did. Because sometimes people like to say, well, you know, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in should not perish, whatever, last time life. And so they just take the idea of God's love and run with it, which is true. God loves the world, but without Jesus dying, you're going to hell. <laughs> oh, oops, forgot that part. Yeah, because you see, there had to be a price to pay. There had to be a sacrifice made for sin. There had to be something to balance the scales of what you've done. And you can't balance them yourself. <laughs> Sorry. You don't have anything that measures up to what you've done compared to what God did. Because you see, God made the world and we screwed it up. So somehow balancing the two, it just don't work out. Now, the way that it gets balanced is when God says, hey, you know, you pay the price of perfection because I made you perfect. You went and screwed it up. When you want to fix it, then come see me and I'll give you the solution. The solution is my son. Because you can't fix it, but he can and he will, because he did. But the only way that I'm going to accept it is if he accepts you. So if he accepts you, then I accept his solution for what we have screwed up in creation. Because that really is what it boils down to, is that it wasn't Satan that screwed up creation. It was you. Yeah, you and me. Because if we would have been put in the same situation, We'd have done the same thing. Yep. I know you don't think so. That's okay. So, fine. Even if you don't think so. Jesus died so that you could live. Jesus paid the price so that you could have salvation. Jesus gave his life so that you could live his life that he would no longer have in this life for us except that we accept him to live through us and so he would come in us now i know that didn't make any sense at all because those are all lots of theological terms but you see in this devotional we're dealing with utmost <laughs> so we don't always talk in simple terms we talk about propitiation atonement sacrifice sanctification you know all those kind of like technological terms that you can't that you can't find in the bible although propitiation Maybe. But what it boils down to is Jesus died for you. Jesus accomplished by his death everything for you. Everything that is needed for your salvation, 
everything that is needed for your sanctification, everything that is needed for your propitiation of sin that you are going to commit and have committed and possibly did in the past has been paid for or has been taken care of by God. Now, since it is Jesus who did it all, we still have to stand before Jesus. Oh, oh. And while people like to say at the judgment seat of Christ there's no condemnation, I want to know about those people that cast out demons in Jesus' name and raised the dead in Jesus' name and did all these marvelous works in Jesus' name because I think it says in there that they stand before Jesus and they say, but Lord, didn't we do all these wondrous works in your name? Didn't we do all these things in your name? Didn't we look like a Christian? Didn't we talk like a Christian? Didn't we act like a Christian? Didn't we have the assurance of God so that we knew that we were once saved, always saved? Didn't we, Lord? And Jesus looks at him and says, mm, I didn't know you, you workers of iniquity. Depart from me. Hmm. They had the power. Yeah. They raised the dead. Yeah. They did all these wondrous works. Yeah. They didn't know him. Hmm. And little itsy bitsy teeny part there workers of iniquity Ooh, so you mean that beneath the Christian veneer there was some rotted wood maybe some mold he never knew them so though they look like it though they got what looks like the Holy Spirit and all that good stuff he didn't know them so when we appear before Jesus Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was in need, you took care of me. When did we do these things to you, Lord? I mean, we didn't go out on missions. We didn't raise the dead. We didn't pray for the sick and they were healed. We didn't do all these marvelous works. We didn't create videos. We didn't have a ministry of our own. We didn't teach. Matter of fact, God, we just kind of were pretty humble about it. And yeah, once in a while we helped that street guy on the corner, you know, that kept panhandling, you know, and he used to drive me nuts, God. You know, I used to hate giving that guy money, but you know, I just figured, well, you know, it could be Jesus. You know, you never know. So you give it to him, you know, and go away, you know, don't bug me today. And some days he gave me money, and some days, you, you mean that was you, Lord? And you counted that still, even though I kind of did it like, eh, you know? sort of like I wanted to and as much as you've done it to the least of my brother and you've done it unto me come in so I think maybe I'm wrong maybe yeah, maybe I'm right uh oh maybe there's something more to this judgment seat of Christ <laughs> than meets the eye because although it, it doesn't sound like that they are cast away from Jesus like to condemnation I think it sounds like they're kind of just cast away from Jesus because condemnation because there was weeping and gnashing of teeth hmm maybe they got cast in the tribulation period <laughs> oops we don't talk about that but what we do talk about is what Jesus did for you so what are you doing in respect to what Jesus has done for you? Because everything that you could do has been accomplished. So since everything's been done for you, what are you going to do about it? I know when I ask Jesus, what do you want me to do? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. I go, ah, okay, cool. That's very esoteric. I can do that. God, I love you. Do you really? Then you do what he says to do, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, sir. Or could it be 
that you spend time with God, getting to know Him. You spend time trying to find out who He is. You spend time with someone you want to spend time with because you want to know God in a more intimate way. Well, as long as you don't wipe me out, God, you know, I'd kind of like to get to know you a little better. Maybe. Maybe there's more going on up there than it's going on down here. And maybe we're supposed to, like, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And maybe all these other things be added unto us. Maybe we should do what Jesus said to do. It is finished. I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. John 17.4 The death of Jesus Christ is the performance in history of the very mind of God. There is no room for looking on Jesus Christ as a martyr. His death was not something that happened to him, which might have been prevented. His death was the very reason why he came and lived. He came to die. Never build your preaching of forgiveness on the fact that God is our Father and that He will forgive us because He loves us. It is untrue to Jesus Christ's revelation of God. It makes the cross unnecessary and the redemption much ado about nothing. If God does forgive sin, it is because of the death of Jesus. God could forgive men in no other way than by the death of His Son and Jesus is exalted to be Savior because of His death. We see Jesus because of the suffering of death crowned with glory and with honor. The greatest note of triumph that ever sounded in the ears of a startled universe was the sounded on the cross of Christ as he spoke and said, It is finished. It is accomplished. That is the last word in the redemption of man. Anything that belittles or obliterates the holiness of God by a false view of the love of God is untrue to the revelation of God given by Jesus Christ. For only in Jesus do we find justice of God founded upon the mercy of God in the revelation of how Jesus died and God made him into sin that we should know no more sin. Never allow the thought that Jesus Christ stands with us against God out of pity and compassion that he became a curse for us out of sympathy with us. No. Jesus Christ became a curse for us by the divine decree. Our portion of realizing the terrific meaning of the curse is conviction of sin, the gift of shame and the penitence given us. That is, this is, and always shall be the great mercy of God. For we should recognize that it was of God and by God that he chose to die for us. For we would not die for ourselves, much less for another. And we sure wouldn't die for our enemies. And yet Jesus demonstrated God by dying for us. Demonstrating that God is love by his love to us. In that he did not keep back death from his only begotten son, but rather allowed his son to die in our place. Jesus Christ hates the wrong in man and Calvary is the estimation of his hatred. He sees the corruption that we are, but he knows this redemption that he purchased and the salvation that he brings and the revelation of God that he was able to make known unto man that we could come to God and be made born again, not of the flesh and the corruption, but of the spirit and perfection. Wow. Imagine that. Is there anything that we could do for him? Maybe there's something we could do with him. Wouldn't it be nice today to find out from Him what you can do in Him, with Him, and by Him alive and well, living in your soul today?